floor and I'm heading into the press briefing room. I kind of wanted to take you on a little tour. This is the West Wing. This is from Gil Campbell. Okay, she's pointing at me. Hey, Gil, come on inside though, because I wanted to give you an idea of what this looks like from the outsider's perspective. A couple of the onlookers here. Hey, everybody, say hi. You're live on MSNBC. <laughs> okay, this would be the press briefing room. Inside live, it's a little quieter in here. Everybody's sort of standing by. Kind of uh, on call, essentially, to see if anything happens. A lot of the crew maintain sort of a position here throughout the day just to make sure they're here if, in fact, any news briefings are called. Jake Seward and the like taking the podium up there. Very recognizable location. It looks a little different, though, when you come in from this particular location. Let's talk a little bit about the president today earlier at the University of the District of Columbia. He, of course, there for the uh, Martin Luther King Day celebration. But uh, something happened while he was there that was kind of of note. Very interesting to, to see how the crowd responded to him there. He talked a little bit about uh, moving out and how he, he and Hillary definitely wanted to stay in the D.C. area. You know, Jake Seward or uh, Joe Lockhart before him uh, giving the briefings. And usually those chairs are all full. But right now, just a smattering of folks all quiet at the White House because the president was busy. We earlier, he was doing a couple of videos and also packing things up in the Oval Office. A lot of equipment around here. Here too. The one thing that might surprise you if you actually walk through these areas is how small everything is. It's a lot smaller than appears on TV because it's an old facility and uh, at the time back when they uh, had a lot fewer live electronic uh, news gathering organizations doing this work, mostly print reporters were here. We're going to take you back scenes and a little bit more from now, but in the meantime, let's get you live back to Monica Novotny standing by in the studio with an update on the day's news. Hey, Monica. Hi, Ashley. Parade, the animation there showing you the route the parade will take, at least from the Smithsonian to the North Lawn of the White House. Hi, everybody. I'm back here, essentially around the North Lawn, but I'm sort of in the with cameraman. I'm going to wave to you, which is the, uh, the press location where all of the correspondents do their live shots, and the doorway inside to the press room. Let me take you inside there, because all along I had planned to turn the camera around and show you the different view. Let's do that now. This is the view that you normally get, but let's go back this way because there are a couple of things that might surprise you. First of all, all the equipment that's always on standby and a lot of the crews and people who are waiting just in case there's a news conference call, they're here, ready to go, ready to go live. Come on back here though. See this? I think things might be a little lax nowadays because I'm going to take you on a wee bit of a tour and I will apologize in advance if the microphone pops in and out. It's because this is kind of a difficult area to get transmission so you might hear a pop here and there but I'll, I'll give my best tour analysis if I can. Coming through this way, this is the Associated Press offices and their workspace. Just a little bit farther, as you see them working away, Reuters, and that's where they do their filing from, really just steps away from the briefing room. Back around this way, and you come into some of the other workspaces, the Washington Times, Chicago Tribune. Down there at the very far end, that's Paul Singer. He's with UPI. Paul, did you used to work with Helen Thomas? Yeah, do you see her very often anymore? Yeah, she now occupies the place right here. There you go. Interesting. Paul Singer saying that he's not only worked with Helen Thomas, but that he works right behind her. Back this way, as I get Leroy to pan over behind me, there's Bob Kirk. I don't know if you can see him through the window. Bob Kerr is uh, working right now filing for NBC News in our NBC News workspace. Very crowded quarters back here. A couple of pizza boxes over in the kitchen area, too, with a microwave or two. Let's walk back this way and see if we can't get a bit of a view as well. The interesting thing is, is that when you get to the outgoing administration, not only are things quieter, but the president's schedule is a lot more lax too. Someone said, don't be surprised if you just see him around. We haven't today, but we did talk earlier with Jake Seward who said he would see if maybe the president would come out and talk to us. I'm highly doubtful that that will actually happen, but it is interesting nonetheless to be able to take the tour around the, uh, the briefing room. It's a West Wing show. CJ usually takes the set up there, but that, of course, being in Los Angeles. This being the real deal. Take a look at the number of seats, though. You might think, being that this would be the place everybody's always present for a news conference, that there might be more. Nah, not many at all. Not even 50. So it's kind of interesting to see it's as small as it is. Those doors right there, by the way, the ones that are closed, no go not to go through those doors ever. That's off limits to the press. In fact, it's kind of funny. I was given the briefing as I came through to get my little press credential. You don't go anywhere without one of these. It took about a half hour to clear into the White House, too, because there are all sorts of social security issues. You have to get your number in and everything else. You've got to have some advanced clearance. But I was also told just exactly where we couldn't walk and where we could walk. And surprisingly enough, you can do the walk from here to those camera positions out there. In fact, let me take you back out there because I wanted to show you a view that very few people actually get. And I'm going to actually have to hustle because I want you to be able to see this. In the meantime, 
Let me get Gil, our camera operator, to spin things around too, because here's a view you don't often get. The correspondents who work out of that press briefing room, and uh, don't forget the stakeout position, just in case the vice president or the president or maybe a diplomat comes out and wants to have a chat. Here's a view you don't often see over on the North Lawn where all those correspondents do their live shots. Take a look. Rife with equipment. It is 24-7, 365 days a year, just like this. The equipment stays here. This stuff all cleared, covered for foul weather. And you can even see some of the correspondents getting ready to do their live shots right now. That's that pretty shot of the White House over top your shoulder. This is the not so pretty location where you actually end up doing that live shot from. So it's kind of interesting to get a, a secondhand view and a backdoor view of all the machinations of how you report from the White House. Lester, how close are you at this point? I, I am very close. Can we punch up the nose camera, guys? I want to show her how close we are. Okay, that's the gate. This is where the, the president will walk through. What you're looking at down there is the, uh, the inauguration stand right in front of the White House. So very close. I hope to join you there. Um, as long as security has my name on the list and I can shed <laughs> enough metal here to go through Good the machine luck. in it's a short tricky. amount of time. But I will uh, s I'll see you in a few. <laughs> we'll be right back.